Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. All right, man, let's talk about how Danny Garcia became Earl Spence Jr.'s mandatory. And what does Earl Spence Jr. think of Danny Garcia? Hit the subscribe button, bell icon button. Y'all know who it is, your boy CJ Goodfellow, Goodfellow Sports TV. Continue to bring the content after content after content. And I will be doing the NBA Live tonight if I don't fall asleep again. I was tired yesterday. Um, but, uh, yeah, puts me today that uh, Al Heyman paid for Danny Garcia to become the mandatory for Errol Spence. He sent that back allegedly over to the We Be Crooks, WBC. Um, we Be Chumps, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people wondering how is Sean, was Sean number one contender? And Danny was number two, and Danny hadn't beat nobody but uh, Red Cash, and uh, who, who he beat uh, Granados, and he became the number one contender. And I'm telling y'all, the, the number one problem in boxing is the sanction belt bodies. They so corrupt. On all of them outside the IBO and the IBF is stationed outside the United States. Therefore, they have no, they you no, know, not responsible for nothing. For the most part, bare minimum things where you have isolated situations where certain fighters have sued the sanction of belt body. So, like I said before, it's not about how good you is. When they come to corporate America, it's about who you know. And Danny Garcia know Al Heyman. He was promised a pay-per-view fight. Al Heyman, you know, gave him the Earl Smith fight. And it's unfortunate because Danny Garcia has not earned a pay-per-view fight with Earl Smith. He just not ha hadn't earned it. What has he done? You know, he lost to Sean. He ain't did nothing significant. He should have to go through a Yugis, you know, at least a Yugis to, to get a title shot. You know, he get a tune-up and to the sanction of Bell body start taking control until they start taking control and doing the right thing. You know, like I said, we was talking about live the other day. It was a Sunday. And Pete and then uh, uh, Dre came on. Dre Berry came on and said, Nobody care about Olympia or Earl Spence, and that's probably the best mandatory that's probably going to be ordered this year. Real talk. That's probably the best mandatory. Look at AJ mandatory. Bratsworth Pulev. You know, look at uh, uh, Jose Ramirez mandatory. Victor Postal, that's a really good mandatory. Then he got he got a secondary mandatory in Jack Contrell. Look at Josh Taylor mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Like, these mandatory shots be garbage. You know, uh, Arthur Perturbia. Uh, better be at whatever they want to call it. It's mandatory. Some dude from China we never heard of. How's guys, you know, not doing nothing? They, they need to come out with a with a system for all sanctioning belt bodies, bro. The WBC, the IFBF, the WBA, and the, and the, and the uh, WBO. If you ain't beat three top ten opponents or at least two top five opponents, you can't be a mandatory. You can't just beat top 20 guys and then beat a couple top 15 guys and beat a mandatory. Danny Garcia does not deserve a, a mandatory versus Earl Spence. He don't. His, his resume at 147 is horseshit. And all this, all because Al Heyman sent the bag over to the WBC, they make him the mandatory. And then they put it on pay-per-view like, you know, do they understand that a lot of these fights they putting on pay-per-view, they got to put on regular TV now? Because people ain't had a paycheck and, and, and may not have a paycheck for two or three months, some people. The last thing people thinking about is flying out to a fight. The last thing people think think about is paying 80 bucks for that subpar fight. And I'm going to get to why it's a subpar fight. I don't care what none of these marks say. I'm, I'm going to make my case. So just give me a minute. It's going to be it's gonna be sweet. But there you go again. Al Heyman, you know, it's all about who you know and not what you know. This this is this is Al Heyman working this match. Danny Garcia don't deserve this shot. You know what I'm saying? You can duck and duck and wait and wait and then get a title shot. How? You should have to fight and fight and fight and fight. I'm telling you, if they had one title per division, we wouldn't have this problem. You know, he could turn down a Crawford uh, shot, you know, uh, uh, and then wait and wait and wait and, and bum bash and bum bash and bum bash and get a shot at, at two titles versus Earl Smith's nah. nine. It shouldn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, it's just the game is. People going to try to big this fight up. It's not no. This is a tune-up. This is this is a glorified tune-up. And I and I stand Errol Smith's mind. 
And the reason Earl Spence put, picked Danny Garcia is because to come back rather than Pacquiao, because he think Danny Garcia tune up. Like I told you guys, that's facts. He think Danny Garcia is a can of tuna fish. This was given to all this information was given to me today this morning. Danny Garcia, Earl Spence believes Danny Garcia is a tuna. That's why he coming back flying through a window. I told you guys, Manny Pacquiao was asked for him time and time again. He said no. He said no. He said no. I ain't got no reason why he ducked Manny Pacquiao for good reason. He ain't hundred percent healthy. And he, if you don't think you 100% healthy, what that think, what that say about Danny Garcia? He think Danny Garcia tune up. That's why he's taking the Garcia fight. And he gonna be for a rude awakening because Danny Garcia locked in. A tune up is is, is like red cash some, for him. You know, a tune up is like Mikey Garcia for him. You know what I'm saying? A tune up is somebody that ain't no threat. You know, Rob Salka, those are tune-ups. Adrian Granados, guys like that. Adrian Broner at this point. That's a tune-up. And I think his arrogance is going to end up, and it's going to be a lot, if, if, if he struggle or get a gift or he lose or get knocked out, it's going to be excuse-making. How you look at it? If it's Danny, if it's Lippy S. Qdoba winner uh, for the IBF interim title, if it's, uh, get my Charlo bottle. I'm unveiling the Charlo bottle again. If it's Terrence Crawford two years ago, two for now, all oh, stuff, it's, it's going to be a built in excuse. And the excuse before the car accident was he was drained. He another motherfucker that's drained. All the welterweights that's on PBC side, the top guys, Danny, Sean, Keith, Earl Spence are drained. And you put them during this corona shit, bro. Telling you, Danny Garcia already on he already on, on point. And when you when you when you already put in your mind that a guy had tune up and he really ain't a tune up, and like most people mind people gonna say, Oh, this ain't no tune up. Dude, this Danny Garcia, tough fighter. You put in your mind, he going to work, he's sparring South Paul's everything I hear about people going in and out of Philly or still in Philly is he locked in. He know you lose this fight to Earl Spence, bro. You might as well hang it up. And people say, you know, we was like, oh, there's no way Danny can beat Earl Spence. Why not? Why not? People are putting Earl Spence up there like he motherfucking Oscar De La Hoya at the division. Or he Trinidad or he Floyd at the division or some shit like that. You know, people ranking him like that. You know, no. That motherfucker got more flaws than some unauthorized Jordans, some UAs. You know what I'm saying? People acting like he like like unbeatable. You know how people just forget the Sean Porter fight. That motherfucker arguably lost that fight. And Danny Garcia do some things well. A lot of good things well. Sharp puncher, big puncher, counter puncher. And this one people just can't get over this. He ain't healthy. And you got a motherfucker that still rolling around with rappers, still drinking, liquored up, face still not just not right. You got that guy. Still not being disciplined. And you giving him all this free time. Don't know when boxing going to come back. And it's expected that he fight two times next year. And depending on what this coronavirus is going to do. And you telling me that they go in, they go into a fight, let's say August. That he going to be in shape when before Sean Porter fight, he was drained. He was drained. You can tell he's a drained fighter. He ain't at his best weight right now. His best weight is going to be at 54 right now. So you give him all this free time to drink and, and party and do all this shit, he dance with other dudes. You know, if, if you ain't concerned about him flying through a car window, be concerned about his him being drained and him not taking the proper precautions not to be drained. Because that was always the issue. People say, oh, Earl blowing up in between fights. I'm disappointed in him. I mind. I'm disappointed in him suddenly. I mind. You know, Earl, Earl could have did a lot better, man, to get in shape for this fight, man. You know, hit the light button, man. Hit the light button, man. You know what I'm saying? He could have done a lot better to get in shape, man. You know, no, nah, motherfucker, he is who he is. A lot of times when dudes blow up in between between fights like that, it's not because they they not disciplined. They had a, they had a weight class that they don't belong at. 
That's the bottom line. They're the weight class they don't belong at. When you drain your body, when you deprive your body of nutrition and fluids and, and, and food, and then you get a break, what's your body going to do? It's going to blow up. It's going to blow back up. That's 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 human. That's the human body. It's going to blow up past this probably two or three times past this natural weight. So if you're really walking around at, you know, 170 and you draining yourself, you're probably going to be walking around at 190, 200 pounds. And that's what people need to understand about it. You know, if it ain't the car accident, one thing concerned me about the dude, you know, other than his lifestyle, before I found out that he really was, like, like Leon Muhammad say, and Nate, Nate uh, Jones say, a, 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 a functional alcoholic and a party boy, well, my thing was he was drained. You can tell in his body, his energy level was dropping. When Earl was with Blu-ray and he was, you know, you know, he was, you know, you know, pretty much active, you know, he was, uh... How can I say? He was, uh, he had more energy. He was getting stronger doing fights. Now his energy level dropped. So, you know, it is what it is, man. So he posted a fight two times this year. He believed Danny and tune up. And Danny got Al Heyman allegedly played WBC for Danny to be the mandatory. That's the hoopla. Make sure that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I uh, need to reach out to me if you have a request, question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request, whatever situation may be. That information is in the description. Want to make a donation? That link's in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Y'all know what the business is one time for the one time. It's your boy CJ Goodfella, Goodfella Sports TV. We don't.